Hi, thank you very much for tuning in. We've got a great and exotic recipe coming right up. All the ingredients are in the description of the video. Let's talk a little bit about them. We're just using simple garam masala. We've got some leftover dal, which is great for incorporating into dansaks. Some nice long green peppers, some cauliflower, fresh coriander. We're not going to be using all that pineapple, but just a couple of chunks. We've got some slivers of ginger, one shallot, two green chilies, a red onion, a potato. We're going to be using some lemon. We're going to be using some turmeric, salt and pepper, some peas, tomato puree. But first of all, let's parboil our veg. You can start by adding adequate water to a pan. Add the turmeric. We're also going to add the salt and pepper. Looks a little bit messy doing it like that, but it's very uh, practical. The potatoes take longer than the cauliflower to soften. So in goes the potatoes and I've cut them up nice and big. So five minutes for the potatoes. It's like a jungle <laughs> in the kitchen. So good thing about parboiling is always maximize your time. Once you're waiting for something to happen, you can simply prep your peppers and your chilies and chop your vegetables. Yeah, I remember my first time in India, I think it was, um, 2006 went to a restaurant quite late at night and I ordered a Malay and I didn't really think much of it I thought yeah that sounds nice it's vegetarian the veg is super good in uh, tropical India anyway and when the um, dish came I could not believe it it was absolutely shocking but fantastic at the same time it had I kid you not, it had pieces of mango, pineapple, cherries, and other exotic fruit in a nice, rich, spicy, creamy sauce. It was really thick and it was absolutely delicious. So people might be looking at the pineapple here and thinking, whoa, what's he doing with that? But, um, you know, Dan Sack is open to interpretations in restaurants in Britain. They quite often add some pineapple, pineapple juice, pineapple, etc. So this is along those lines, but not quite a fruit curry, but I'd love to make a fruit curry on the recipe, on the channel, should I say, one day. So I'm cutting those chilies up. And let's cut the tomato up. It's lovely ripe tomatoes. Anytime I see um, tomatoes like that. I always buy them. Let's uh, do a few different shapes with the tomatoes. And the pineapple, we're just going to cut a little bit off to get that acidity into the dish. Like so, so colourful. And this pineapple is not 100% ripe. So all I'm going to do is cut one piece off and I'm going to use that and it's going to be a little bit of a prolonged cooking. Mmm, that pineapple smells absolutely divine. So the pineapple um, softens. So let's just have a look at our potatoes. They've been boiling for five minutes. Next, it's time to add the cauliflower, which uh, cook a lot quicker. So it's good to add things in a logical order. Just give it a good mix. Look at that lovely turmeric infusing. Good to put a lid on to steam that cauliflower. We're also going to add the peas as well. And when I can find my lid, I'll pop it on the pot. Now it's time to swap rings. This pan up and this is going to serve two or three portions depending on how hungry you are so there's about four tablespoons of oil there always heat your pan then heat your oil then add ingredients so the great thing about using shallots especially when they're big they don't take too long to prepare for cooking but they're very similar to real Indian onions and Mumbai piaz or whatever you want to call them. Nice uh, 
water content and natural sweetness. In with the green chilli and in with the juliennes of ginger. Add garlic if you wish, but I want to keep it tangy. We'll come back in perhaps two to three minutes. So those onions are starting to brown. Next I'm adding the pineapple. Just want to soften that in the oil at this early stage because the temperature is the hottest in the beginning. When you start adding water content like tomato puree etc you're never going to get that same heat. So I'm just going to soften those pineapples. So I think of pineapple fritter. So there's plenty of recipes worldwide that incorporate fried pineapple. And this is another one. So if we have a look over here, I've just put a fork into the cauliflower and it's soft, but by no means going to break up. So I'm just going to take that out of the way now. Can anybody recommend a really good oven top cleaner? As you can see these little dots, very hard to get rid of, even with the stuff that you put on and wait for half an hour. So if anybody can recommend some great oven cleaner available here in the UK, it would be most appreciated. Because it takes a lot of scrubbing, especially for us that love cooking curries with a lot of splashing. So the pineapple's pretty soft and the onions are nice and browned. Get good depth of flavour when you uh, properly cook out your onions. And nice and tangy. About two tablespoons of garam masala and give that a good stir. Just want to cook the acidity out of the tomato to get it nice and sweet. And of course you can use tin tomatoes, blended fresh tomatoes, it really doesn't matter. So just give that a good sizzle for about two and a half minutes now. Next I'm going to add those lovely green peppers and just stir them in. I'm adding this part of the lemon with a squeeze and I'm adding it in. There's no seeds, nice and tangy. It'll complement the pineapple juice really well. Smells really good. Next is a game changer. We're going to add the lentils. So nice thick sauce. And the lentils also have a um, combination of spices. So the lentils have some spinach in, which is great. Does anybody know tropical curry? When you go to an authentic place, Pakistani restaurants, often they do a tropical, tropical curry where they've got everything in little um, metal bowls in the beginning. And if you ask for a tropical, you get a little bit of chicken curry, a little bit of lamb curry, maybe a little bit of cha chana masala. So this is based along those lines, not your everyday dan sack that you're going to get in a British Indian restaurant. Yeah, interesting. Tropical. Check that out, guys. I don't know whether there's any information even available about tropical curry online, it's where you get a mix of meat and veg and put it all together and re-cook it at the time of... Um, ordering. So I'm just going to sizzle that off now and the great thing about doing your vegetables with the water is do not drain your vegetables. Keep the stock and that's filled full of the pepper, the salt, the turmeric and obviously the natural flavour from the vegetables. So that's going to have a good stir. It's going to come back to the boil and we'll come back. Looks very rich. Nice natural colour to that as well. It's come to a heat and it's time to add our peas, potatoes and cauliflower. And it's important to have them about 80% cooked so when they're added to a dish they still take on flavour from the sauce. Maybe you reached a good temperature. Isn't curry and the love of Indian food one of the best hobbies you can get? You know you can fill your head full of inspiration from multiple sources, from books, forums, YouTube, restaurants, things you've eaten at other people's houses 
and come up with some ideas and then go shopping and then come back and cook and just seeing all those ingredients laid out and then cooking it, the flavours, the sensations, absolutely one of the best hobbies you can have. <laughs> it's uh, thickening up slightly. So next, a good handful of freshly chopped coriander and we're going to add those tomatoes as well. We're going to check the salt again because we only use the salt for parboiling the vegetables even though we did use the stock which contains the salt. Let's have a taste. Whoa! That tastes really nice. That's coming to the end, nice and steamy. I know it. Uh, give that lemon a bit of a squeeze. You can discard the lemon and keep it in. And I'm just going to let that rest. And we'll come back shortly and serve a portion so you can see the dish up close. So that's what we got for our effort. We've got a nice, thick, fruity, wholesome sauce packed with spices and flavour without overdoing it. Nice and colourful as well. So we've got another four bowls of that. So we do get actually about four portions here. So I hope you've enjoyed the video as much as uh, I did cooking it. Feel free to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.